Harriet Ann Jacobs once said, No pen can ever give an adequate description of all the pervading corruption produced by slavery. As this is true, I believe that no narrative, book, poem, or song can ever recapture the horror that many faced and lived through during the time of slavery and many years after. One of those minis that lived and faced such horrors was Isabella Bonfrey, also known as Sojourner Truth. Born in 1797 to Mama Bet and James Bonfrey, Isabella, the youngest of 12 kids, did not anticipate the struggles that would plague her life. Being born a slave, meaning human property, Isabella did not know that the people she considered to be her parents would have no say in her fate, whom she would become, or what she would do in life. Neither would she dream that she would be auctioned at the age of nine away from her mother. The life that Isabella inherited was a life that no child could dream, a life that she would even risk death in order to change. It is with this first auction that Isabella's life of struggles and hardships began. As she once put it, now the war begun. Being separated from her parents for the first time, Isabella went to live with Nillies in also County, New York, an English-speaking family. As English was neither her first nor second language, being born of Dutch-speaking parents, Isabella's lack of knowledge in the English language made her incompetent in the chores and duty of a slave, but familiar with whippings, whippings that were so harsh that it lacerated her skin so deeply that the scars that were made would exist forever. But even during these whippings, in times of hardship caused for her inability to please her mistress, Isabella kept to the instruction of her mother, which was to keep her faith in God, telling him all in her times of affliction, and believing that he had the power to save and deliver her, even from the horrors of slavery. Her faith in God later served her, when at the request of her father, Martinus Shriver, in the year of 1808, went to retrieve Isabella for the price of $105. But she only remained with him for 18 months before she was sold again to Mr. Dumont in New Pulse, New York. It was with the Dumonts that she remained until a short time before her emancipation from slavery in 1828. Although the Dumonts were a good family, as Isabella put it, Beth B., if one must be a slave, meaning that they treated their slaves well for slave. It was with the Dumonts that she risked her life to escape slavery. Escaping slavery in 1827, after Mr. Dumont refused to give her the freedom he had promised, Isabella put all her trust in God that he would deliver her from evil and give her courage, bringing her to a house at the end of her road, to the Van Wagners, it was the Van Wagners who in the end brought the freedom of Isabella and her daughter Sophia from the Dumonts, whom Isabella would later return to visit in order to buy the freedom of her son. Although it is Isabella's life as a slave that gives her the pathos and ethos for the activist she later becomes, nothing in her past gives the slightest hint that she would become such an extraordinary person and leader as we know her to be in today's history. Nothing in her life story prepares us for the reign and life of Sojourner Truth. It is in 1843 that Isabella changes her name to Sojourner Truth as she pledges an oath to travel and speak the truth. It is with this name change that the great works of Isabella Bonfrey is done. It is with this name that she becomes known as an abolitionist and feminist. And it is with this name that she considers herself destined to do the work of God. Having experienced the life of a slave and the life of a free man or free woman, Sojourner Truth was able to speak from experience of the evils of slavery and the capabilities of the Negro race. Not knowing whether people would accept her, but knowing the discontent and the animosity that she would produce for speaking out against the evils of slavery and much more, Truth did so with no hesitation or with an utter disregard for her life, 
which she placed in the hands of God. Just as words cannot speak for the life or sojourn of truth, there are historical facts that are unverifiable, such as how many children truth actually had, whether 6 or 13, or even the year we know to be her birth, as ample records for slaves were not important to slave owners, nor were birth certificates. But despite this bitter fact, although I may never truly be able to give a sufficient historical timeline or overview of Truth's life as a slave, I can do my best to give justice to the life she led as an activist for women's rights as well as the rights of the Negro race, and much more. The coming out of Sojourner Truth can be said to have taken place with her 1851 Ain't I a Woman speech, given in Akron, Ohio, at the Women's Rights Convention. Although not planned, Truth's first public address before a mixed audience on such a controversial national issue, women's rights. This address came to be much more than an address on women's rights. It was advocacy for the abolition of the entire slave system. Truth stood for the bridging of the issue of sex and race into one movement. She was living proof that contradicted all the dominant white male culture said women could not do. All of what they said the Negro race was incapable of. Sojourner Truth could eat, work, and lift as much as any man. While being a woman, and a black woman at that, she was able to live a civilized and productive life without being enslaved. Which many whites believe the Negro race to be incapable of, concluding that slavery was a benefit to the growth and the improvement of the Negro race. Being most famous for her abolitionist work, Truth actually did much more than what she is known for. Not only did she fight for women's rights, the rights of the Negro race, and the abolition of the slave system, but she also fought for the abolition of capital punishment and for prison reform. Despite the fact that her most famous address is her Ain't I a Woman speech, Truth gave many speeches throughout her life, some recorded and others not. Although I continue to call Truth addresses speeches, in many ways they were not formal speeches, but narratives and, narratives and sermons that reiterated her life experiences and the lessons she learned from them. I quote, Father, forgive me as I forgive those who trespass against me. I found that I was against hanging. When a man kills another in cold blood and you hang him, then you murder in cold blood also. Her 1881 address to Michigan State Legislature. This quote takes up the idea that to support capital punishment is to support and condole the system of slavery. The system that once founded it just to hang a man without trial because of the color of his skin. Truth refuses to support such a system that goes against God-given commandments, those same commandments that whites were quick to use to defend slavery. Those same commandments that made no exception to the rules, that killing by any name we wish to call it, or by any person we wish to conduct it, is by all means all the same. Nothing more than cold-blooded murder. It was through these narratives and her actions that she made a difference in people's lives and an impact in history. In conclusion, Sojourner Truth stood as the embodiment of all the principles she fought for, proving that actions do speak louder than words. She went a step further than just standing and speaking. She acted on the issues she spoke out against. She helped to feed and clothe freemen and their families. She protested and petitioned the government for the rights of the Negro race and women. And she even went as far to address the President of the United States. She used her words and experience as a tool, a tool to help her reach mixed audiences 
And despite her illiteracy and lack of education, she stood tall and bore her cross for all to see.